Will rents on buy-to-let property continue to rise in 2024? What's driving that increase in rents and which parts of the country are rents rising fastest? That's all coming up in this video, so stay tuned. If you're new to this channel, don't go away without subscribing and smashing that bell icon. We put out new videos each and every week, all dedicated to keeping you successful in the world of property investing. Smash that like button, also comment, let me know what you think of the ideas I'm sharing in this video. Rents on buy-to-let properties have been increasing each year, pretty much uh, at double-digit rates. Here's what we've got for 2023, which shows a 10.2% increase in rents nationally. Inner London and outer London lead the charge with the maximum increase in rents. And the area of the country where rents have risen the least is in the southwest of England, which has seen about a 5% increase. Now, a lot of this data has come from Hamptons, the uh, letting agents, and they're also saying that the number of households looking to rent has increased 25% over the last 10 years. So there's considerable demand for rentals up and down the land. But how long will this rent rise continue? Now, of course, we've had inflation, so the cost of a lot of things have gone up and rents will naturally rise uh, because of inflation. But there's far more going on here, particularly with a massive supply-demand imbalance. Uh, rental demand, as I said, has gone up considerably over the last decade, but supply of rental properties has come down. Now, this graph shows new landlord instructions. So these are landlords putting their properties up for let with uh, lettings agents. Now, you can see since 2015, there is a little bit of a downward trend. Now, when you look in the media, there's a lot of talk of landlord selling. Now, that is true to a certain extent. A lot of smaller landlords who do not own their properties in limited companies, they are being hit by massive tax rises thanks to Section 24. Section 24, of course, means that if you own properties in your own name, which are rented out, you cannot claim your mortgage interest as an expense when calculating your tax bill. And of course, as mortgage interest rates have risen, not being able to claim mortgage interest as a as a, as a tax deductible expense has meant particularly for uh, high rat rate taxpayers that they aren't making any rental profits at all. And those folks have either incorporated if they are able to do so, or if they have not, then they've had to sell up basically. Now there's a lot of change in the market as well to do with licensing rules. We've got the renters reform bill coming through and that and, and such like. And at times like that, when there's a lot of change in the market, some older landlords decide that now's the time to cash in their chips. And quite frankly, I've been in the property game for more than 30 years now, and I've seen this time and time again, where there are some rule changes, where there's some new regulation, and particularly when that coincides with a little bit of stagnation in capital appreciation. That is the time where particularly older landlords decide that now is the time to cash in their chips. So that's been happening uh, all the way through my 30 years in the business. The issue right now, quite simply, is that the demand for rental housing has risen astonishingly and supply has not risen accordingly to meet that demand. Now it used to be that a lot of people in fairly ordinary jobs would buy a buy-to-let property as an investment, perhaps as a pension or such like. In fact, 10 years ago, more than 70% of all landlords only had one or two properties. So those were people who were just doing it as a little investment or a pension and doing it in a small scale way. When George Osborne introduced his Section 24 tax on mortgage interest, that basically said to landlords, go big or go home. Uh, you have to do buy-to-let from the point of view of owning those properties in a limited company, which pretty much deterred some of the small-scale people who only never aspired to owning more than one or two. So the fact that those sort of people aren't entering in the market, putting in one or two properties here and there as a sideline investment, has meant that there's a massive shortage of new buy-to-let stock. And if we go back to this table, which shows the regional rental growth across the country, you'll pretty much see that in higher value areas, rents have grown faster uh, simply because 
there's less availability of stock because of course in a higher value area there's a higher barrier to entry for people to buy those sort of properties and put them on the rental market. So the million dollar question is will this continue? Well there is inflation and all of that but there's also a maximum share of wallet. There's an affordability issue here as well and I think we are reaching that and although there's a supply demand imbalance there are, I feel there will be rises this year uh, but I wouldn't expect them to be at the same level as they were in the, in, in the previous year. Don't be surprised if they slow down a little bit, but the trend is still upwards. But tell me what you think in the comments below. I'm interested to know. Smash that like button if you're finding this useful. Also, let me share with you another interesting little bit of data. Decent interest rates for buy-to-let loans are roughly about five and a half to six percent. Now the last time interest rates were at this level uh, it was 2008. Now if we compare inflation adjusted house prices from that time to now those house prices are lower. Lower than at the last time interest rates were at the same level. But rents since that time have risen by 25%. So let that thought percolate for a little while. Let me know what you think in the comments below and see you guys in the next video. The Baker Street Property Meet is the UK's largest and number one property investors networking event. The property market is going through monumental change right now and at Baker Street Property Meet we aim to keep you up to date with the latest tips and tricks and insider tactics to help you keep on top of your property investing game and succeed in these troubled economic times. The Baker Street Property Meet is fundamentally about networking because it's not what you know, it's who you know. And at Baker Street, we aim to connect you with the people to make your property journey a monumental success. There's no better place to be to further your property investment journey than the Baker Street Property Meet. So make sure you're here, you're connecting with myself and Andrew Roberts, our expert guest speakers and 300 passionate property people each and every month. See you at the next meet. Get your spot at bakerstreetpropertymeet.com.